The Jad Challenge is brand new PVM content released for players who have completed the Inferno. Those with a fire cape can still access the first two challenges, the one and two Jads at once. The next four challenges from three to six Jads can only be accessed by players that own an Inferno cape. The one and two Jad challenges are great for people looking to get more comfortable with the Inferno Jads. For the players who want to challenge six Jads, completing it provides a transmog to Jad pets to turn them into the Inferno variant, as well as some toggle for challenges completed. This video is not how to get a good PB or how to do a silly pard mode method like using a rune crossbow. This is for the people who just want one completion for the transmog and to be done with it in the simplest way possible. The challenge is located just south of the Mortal Wreck bank chest. I would highly recommend a Twisted Bow if attempting 6 Jad. It's definitely possible with just a blowpipe, but it's much harder. Other than that, you just want the best ranged DPS gear you can get, as supplies aren't really the worry for this challenge. Elite Void ranged is significantly worse DPS than Armadil due to the Jad's high defense, around 4% worse, and also has worse defense, so I wouldn't recommend Void. Max ranged with the Armadil, Pegasians, Anguish, Barrow's Gloves, and Dragon Arrows are best, but you can definitely downgrade to God Dehide and still easily get the completion. For inventory, with 99 prayer, you need around 3 prayer potions for 5 Jad and under, as well as the Divine Ranging Potion, and the rest your best food. Optionally, taking some Chins. For 6 Jad, throw in another prayer potion just to be safe. The Chin Chompas are great for tagging healers, but they are very difficult to use before you have killed one or two of the Jads in the harder modes. I just tag the healers with Tebow personally. That one extra angler can also be a difference maker. Chimchampas do speed things up significantly if you use them, and are basically necessary if you're using a blowpipe. Keep in mind the type of chinchampas really doesn't matter. Currently gray and red chinchampas have a very similar price, so using red chins right now is probably best. You can prepot a Divine Ranging or Bastion and Angler to 121 HP before entering. You can also optionally prepot an Imbued Heart as it gets reset every attempt, but this makes a very small difference for tanking Jad Mage hits. This video will focus on how to beat 5 and 6 Jads, as these are by far the hardest challenges. 4 Jad and under should be fairly simple to do with some attempts. The Jads have spaced out attack cycles that are relatively normal. For 5 and 6 Jad, I would highly recommend just re-entering without pre-pot to practice the timings for the prayers for a little while. This helps a lot with getting the timing down. Let's quickly discuss how the Jads and healers work before we get into the nitty gritty. The Inferno Jads are tougher than regular Jad. They have a max hit of 113, whereas normal Jad's max is 97. They have the same defense level of 480, but nastier combat stats and 100 extra HP. 350 versus Jad's 250. Within the challenge, the Jads all spawn 5 healers, as opposed to the Inferno where triples only have 3 healers. This makes it basically impossible to out-DPS the healers with a T-Bow like you could regular Jad. The healers are also harder than the healers in the fight caves, with a max hit of 18 versus regular healers max of 14. They go from 60 HP to 100, and have higher stats across the board. The healers can easily kill you if you have 2-3 to three of them attacking you, and you noodle on Jad a bit, so it's important to be smart with how you attack them. The healers are not like they are in the fight caves, where if they are within 4 tiles of Jad they heal him. In the Inferno, they have to be untagged and right next to Jad in order to heal him. If they are stuck behind either you, or other healers, or even stuck under another Jad, they cannot heal him, even if you don't tag them. They spawn in random locations, but always walk towards its southwest tile until next to Jad, so you can abuse this to get the most healers stuck possible. You want to stand in line with the southwest tile of the Jads when possible. This allows some of them to get stuck behind you. It's also best to tag the healer only close to Jad when it is on the opposite side of him, as the healer or healers behind a healer don't need to be tagged. Anything that reduces the amount of clicks you have to do helps dramatically with this challenge. Some small general tips. If you are overhealed, it is impossible for Jad to one-shot you. It is absolutely possible to take Jad hits, and my success is I took multiple. What is important is how you deal with them. If you take a Jad hit, you have to not panic, and focus on eating an angler in between the Jad cycles, and simply doing this repeatedly until you are back to stable health. If you get an unlucky spawn and multiple healers are attacking you, you may need to heal while killing the starting Jads. So make sure you just eat anglers in between the cycles, and click back on Jad, then focusing on changing prayers again. Other than this info, strategy only helps you so much. What matters is throwing attempt after attempt until you get the timings on the prayers down. For 5 Jad, there is a small delay between some of the Jads that can easily throw you off. It's very helpful to understand where these delays are, so you know when you can click healers or food. The East and Southeastern Jad have no delay between their attacks, one tick per attack. There is then a single tick of delay between the Southeastern Jad's attack and the Southwestern Jad's attack, 
again, there's a one tick delay between the southwestern JAD's attack and the western JAD. And then the west and northwestern JAD both have no delay, so they attack you each tick. There's then another tick delay before the eastern JAD, and the cycle repeats. To put it simply, the two JADs on the west and northwest have a tight timing, and the two JADs east and southeast have a tight timing. This influences which JADs should be killed in which order to give you the most time to click in between attacks. You should only do actions like clicking a healer or using a supply when not being attacked by the JADs with tight timing. My goal is to kill a JAD out of each set with tight timing before moving on to the next JADs. So I start with the northern JAD, standing on this tile as it gives you the highest chance of healers getting stuck. This tile also has the benefit of corner trapping the majority of the healers, typically allowing only one healer to hit you. In this run, I had an amazing spawn where I only had to tag two healers, allowing me to safely continue DPSing Jad while tanking only a single healer. After killing the first Jad, I move on to the southeastern Jad. This is the last Jad with tight timing. You can see here I actually tank a Jad hit for a 66. I don't freak out, I just wait until I can safely heal, and then I do that. Reclicking Jad after clicking my Angler. Again, I get a pretty good healer spawn, requiring I tag only three healers. Unfortunately, I do have to tank two healers, so I need to eat Anglers as I attack Jad. After killing this Jad, I move on to the southwestern Jad, the one with the tightest timing remaining. I realize here I walked to the wrong tile in the beginning, and safely move when I can to the tile in line with the southwestern tile. It technically would be better to run all the way to a southwestern tile for the potential to get more healers stuck, but that would make it harder to see Jad's attacks, and I don't want to risk throwing the run at this point. I also try to overheal here to reduce the chance of getting one shot. I have an unfortunate healer spawn where I do have to tag four healers. Luckily, one of the healers at least is stuck under the other Jad's. The timing is lax enough here that I feel safe after tagging all the healers, to move north to allow only one healer to attack me here. But if I were nervous, I would probably just tank both here. After this, it doesn't matter what you kill, and the run should be basically over if you don't make a major mistake. I keep my health as high as possible until I kill the last two Jads. Six Jads are much simpler than five Jad, but are much harder anyway. From North Jad all the way in a circle to Northwest Jad, there is literally no delay in between their attacks. You must be switching prayers each tick an attack comes out. I wait for the projectile from a Jad to be on screen before switching prayer. If you notice they're alternating, you can basically just click the next prayer as soon as your prayer activates. It's very difficult to break up the timings of these Jads, so I start with the northern Jad like before. The only time you can really do any actions is in between the full cycle after the northwestern Jad's attack. There are two ticks before the next Jad's attack is fired at this point. In this run, I had a fairly decent healer spawn. I had to tag three healers, and two were stuck behind me allowing only one healer to attack me. After dealing with the first Jad, I moved after the cycle to this tile and combo eat Angler and Prayer Dose. Depending on how long the first Jad took, you may need to drink some more Prayer Doses. Five Jads is barely any easier than six Jad, as you still have tick perfect timing for five attacks. You just have one extra tick in between the cycles. Again, I had a pretty good healer spawn here. I only had to tag three healers, and two were stuck behind me, just like the prior spawn. After killing the fifth Jad, nerves are starting to hit me, and I take a Jad hit maneuvering southwest to the southeastern Jad. I just carefully overheal and get back to killing Jad. Four Jads left is still pretty tough in sixes, as both sets have two attacks with tick perfect timing. I actually got very lucky here and tanked a zero Jad hit, although it wouldn't have chanced me. In the next cycle, I tank another Jad hit, and it's luckily only an 8. Fours are definitely very awkward still. This is a pretty horrible healer spawn. Only one is stuck behind me, and I have to tank two healers. What also didn't help was tanking a 98 Jad hit here, and getting chanced with each healer attack. 
I carefully healed up when possible, then got back to healing Chad. After killing the fourth Chad, it's pretty tough to die, but the two tight timing Jads can still catch you if you ease up. It technically would be better to maneuver all the way southwest of this Jad, but I don't want to make it more difficult to see any Jad attacks, so no risks are necessary at this point. I unfortunately have to tag four healers here, and two are attacking me. I could have run north here to prevent both healers from hitting me, but I really didn't want to risk anything, so I just stayed there and killed the Jad. At this point, it's really tough to lose, but I play it very carefully and overheal at this point. I should have stood completely southwest of Jad here, but I didn't, and due to that, no healers got trapped. I tag all five healers and get back to Jad, not risking anything, just tanking the healers and killing Jad. On the last Jad, I played very safe, not moving to his southwest tile, and just killing Jad like I did the others. Now that's a Poggers epic moment if I've ever seen one. And that's it for this guide. Leave a like if you liked it, and or subscribe. Thanks, guys.